Hello, Robert. Um, thanks for talking with us today. Um, so I wanted to start by talking about smoking. And my first question is, quite simply, why do people smoke? It's really important to understand that the reasons why people start to smoke and the, right, the why they carry on smoking are very different. Um, so we know, and I guess most people know, that uh, people start to smoke very often because of uh, other people smoking in their environment, um, particularly their friends, but also brothers and sisters, fathers, mothers, and so on. Those actually play a, a role in starting to smoke. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a number of factors that contribute to that. Uh, we know, for example, that people who are more susceptible to depression or anxiety, they're more likely to start to smoke. Uh, people who are more sensation-seeking, they're looking for uh, excitement and so on, they're more likely to start smoking. So there's a whole range of things. Um, but then once you have that first drag on a cigarette, a critical thing happens, and this is because you start to take in nicotine from the cigarette, and that's what keeps you smoking. So what's really interesting is that very often when people start to smoke, um, the experience is actually pretty horrible. You cough, you feel sick, and so on. Um, but something happens in your brain. The nicotine actually gets to a part of your brain which you don't really know about, which says, hang on a minute, what did you just do now? That was, that was a really good idea, do that again. That's what nicotine does. So once you've had that first exposure, then particularly with cigarettes, and not necessarily other forms of nicotine, but I'll, I'll come to that in a minute, but with cigarettes, you get a rapid hit of nicotine, that then changes the brain, and now you've started a process. So then the question is, why do people carry on smoking? And what is it about the nicotine that's continuing to drive this smoking behavior? And a lot of people think it's because of things like, well, nicotine helps with stress and, or because it's really enjoyable. Well, you know, these things, uh, as it happens, are, are not really that important. The really important thing and the way that nicotine acts on the brain is simply to tap into the part of the brain that makes you do things. So when uh, you get a nicotine hit to the brain, it causes release of a chemical called dopamine. Dopamine in a particular part of the brain is what we call a teaching signal. What it does is it tells the brain to pay attention to what you were just doing, in this case, smoking a cigarette, the situation in which you're doing it, it may be at a party, it may be a school break, it may be um, any kind of situation. And then it forges a link between the activity and the situation. So the next time you're in that situation, you're experiencing an unconscious impulse to engage in that behavior again. So the next time you're in that situation, you're thinking, hmm, you know, I, I could really do with a cigarette. You don't know why, it's not for any particular reason, it's just the brain telling you that's what you want to do. So um, nicotine acting on this dopamine pathway is a really important part of the process. But there's another factor as well. And that is that once you've been doing this for a while, then your brain changes. It adapts to the presence of nicotine in the system. And so when your nicotine levels drop below a certain level, you get what I call nicotine hunger. And the reason I call it nicotine hunger is because the experience of it is actually very similar to hunger for food. So um, uh, when you're hungry, you, you get a sort of sensation and you get a sense in your head, well, if I eat some food, then it'll make it go away. Exactly the same with nicotine hunger. Your nicotine levels drop to a certain level. You get this sort of drive state. You're kind of feeling, hmm, I really could do with something. And your brain knows that if you smoke a cigarette, it'll make it go away. So you get this, this drive state when your nicotine levels become too low. So now you've got two things. You've got the, the triggers that uh, cause you to smoke because nicotine has forged this association. And you've got the nicotine hunger. And that's not all. You've got a third thing as well, which is that as your brain becomes used to the nicotine, then um, it changes in other ways. So that when you don't have the nicotine, you start to experience unpleasant nicotine withdrawal symptoms. Now, these are very well characterized and understood, and most smokers will be quite familiar with them. Um, probably top of the list is irritability or aggression. A lot of the times when people stop smoking, the first thing they notice is that they're really tetchy. 
That's a very clear nicotine withdrawal symptom. People become restless. That's a nicotine withdrawal symptom. They get an increased appetite. That's a nicotine withdrawal system, uh, syst- symptom. Uh, they can get depressed and anxious. Nicotine withdrawal symptom. So basically, when you're not smoking, if you haven't smoked for a while, you're starting to feel all these unpleasant sensations. And again, your brain knows that if you smoke a cigarette, they'll go away. So you've now got three things. You've got the the, uh, smoking because of the triggers, you've got smoking because of the nicotine hunger, and you've got smoking because of the withdrawal symptoms. But there's a fourth thing, which is, you know, humans, we're clever people. You know, we make uh, make stories for ourselves about things, and we come to believe things. Um, And so you kind of notice what's going on, and you notice that when you're not smoking, you feel a bit bad and you feel maybe stressed. And so you come to believe that smoking helps with stress. And smoking has all these other things. It's like, you know, you stop banging your head against a brick wall. It's actually quite pleasant. So people think, well, smoking is enjoyable. And people who are most dependent actually experience the most enjoyment from smoking. But it is the kind of enjoyment that's like stopping banging your head against a brick wall. So now you've got the full range of things. You've got Uh, You've got the triggers, you've got the nicotine hunger, you've got the nicotine withdrawal symptoms, you've got the the beliefs about smoking, smoking helping with stress. And then you add on to that the fact that smoking is also in many cultures quite a social thing. Other people are smoking, you can give cigarettes, you can receive cigarettes, it's actually part of a bonding thing. And you can see why it is that people find it so hard to stop.